Ever since I started this channel, I've been taking my audio more seriously. It hasn't been a conscious decision, but comparing amps, streamers, speakers, and especially DACs, I've inadvertently trained myself to listen more closely for small differences. This does not make me a fun person to be around. All right, I think this time it was a bit weaker. Um, not as much air. Uh, okay, I I'd like to hear B again. Go ahead and uh, switch and, and play B. Guys, switch, switch to B, please. Are you freaking kidding me? This video isn't about those small differences. I'm going to pause for a bit and I want you guys to tell me in the comments below if you hear any noise. Now, I'm not talking about the hiss coming from your speakers. Instead, listen for a hum or buzzing sound coming from your amplifier or integrated amp. Did you hear it? Have you noticed anything like this in the past? How about when you move closer? Well, I actually did. What the f It's not that serious, but still needs to be dealt with. So what's actually happening here is unwanted DC introduced by your large neighborhood transformer is causing the transformer in your amp to vibrate and hum. Ah! Said amp transformer is only supposed to be getting AC, which is not the case in my case. Now, you can call your utility company and complain about DC on your lines in hopes for an eventual fix. So I spoke with my electrician and he said, yeah, sure call Toronto Hydro and they'll probably laugh you off the phone. He then said, why don't you move to the country and just use solar? Obviously not a real option, although tempting. Failing that, if you want to take matters into your own hands, you may want something called a DC blocker. Enter Audiolab, specifically the Audiolab DC block. And before we continue, this isn't at all a sponsored video. It was purchased with my own cash and Audiolab didn't provide this as a review sample. I'm just sharing my experience in hopes of helping some of you guys out. So with all that said, let's take a closer look at the unit itself. As you can see, it's just a small black metal box. Nothing I would consider audio rack jewelry by any means. It's matte black finish reminds me of a computer tower from the early 90s. Remember, you're not buying this thing for its good looks though. It's here to solve a problem. The DC block also comes in a silver, but I personally recommend getting black so it doesn't draw any attention to itself. So turning the unit around to the back reveals its connections. And with that, my biggest gripe. All right, so this one goes to the mains and it also comes with this plug, which is a weird female to male. And this will go into my amp. So it kind of sucks that you can't use your own plugs. I mean, maybe I could get an adapter for that. I'm not sure. What does a DC blocker actually do? First, according to Audiolab, it's got a high performance audio class filtering circuit that removes RFI and EMI contaminants from the main supply. But the main thing that it does is exactly what the name implies. In an amp, you only want to amplify and output AC. That's what music is, a wavy line of alternating current. Assuming you have a high amount of DC or direct current sneaking into your lines, the blocker corrects the DC offset and rebalances the main sine wave. I believe they use bridge rectifiers and capacitors, and if you really want to dive deeper into this, I'll leave a link to a video from Paul McGowan at PS Audio that gets more into the weeds. Great, good, wonderful, but does it actually work? So I connected my H190 into the DC block and... All right, moment of truth here. I hear nothing. No more humming. 
the H190 is completely silent and has remained that way ever since. Guys, we did it. But I've got two other amps in my house. So this one is the Peachtree Gen 1, and if you guys watch my video review of it, you'll notice that one of my main complaints with an early prototype was the switch mode power supply making this really high-pitched, awful noise that I could hear from the couch. So was this because of DC? Probably. In any case, the one that Peachtree switched it out with was better shielded and dampened to fix this. And this one actually doesn't make any noise whatsoever. Too bad I didn't know about the DC blocker back then, but as a result, everyone who purchased this amp since actually got a better product. So that's pretty cool. The last amp setup we're gonna chat about is the Hegel H390 in my main listening room. All right, so I tried it with my 390 and there's a noticeable buzz without the DC blocker uh, when I put my ear right up to it. And then when I plug the DC blocker into it, there's nothing you can hear. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I just listened to uh, Roundabout, which is such a freaking awesome song. So well recorded. And um, I, it sounds amazing. Uh, does it sound just as good without the DC blocker? I'm honestly not sure. One thing that they say is so important is the, the power going to your system. And if you're getting a buzz, a noticeable sound from the toroidal transformers or whatever, then it's, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's got to make uh, some sort of an impact on sound quality. So... I'm just assuming it sounds better with the DC blocker. I, it's really tough to AB. I mean, I could try. All right, so I turned it on and I do hear the hum again. Here, let's see if you could hear it. Yeah, so that hum, although it's inaudible from where I sit on my Lazy Boy, it's audible when I'm right next to the machine and not audible when the DC blocker is plugged in. So really interesting stuff. I'm gonna try actually listening to Roundabout again and see if I hear a difference, who knows. All right, so I played Roundabout by Yes again. Um, I fast forwarded to the around the five minute mark, which is probably my favorite from then on is my favorite part of the song such a great track. Anyways, um, I think I actually did notice a difference, but I'm not 100% sure. It could be psychoacoustic. There was a lot of time in between because getting behind my huge TV and unplugging and plugging in, it takes too long to, uh, to not evade my goldfish-like memory. Um, but I think it's it's irrelevant. I mean, if you're sitting at your listening position and you're hearing a noticeable hum from your amp, then I think that this thing makes a lot of sense. Um, now, I down here, I don't notice the, the hum, but I don't know. I, to get rid of the DC on your lines, I think it could, it definitely can't hurt. I think it can only help your sound quality. I'm just, I'm not 100% sure because the, the, the way that I did this test, I mean, if I was blindfolded and someone had it plugged in and someone didn't have it plugged in, I don't know whether I'd be able to tell the difference, but it's, at the very least, you're losing the hum. So I, I still, I think it's a win-win. All right, so I'm back after doing quite a bit of research. So the Audiolab DC block that I tried here the other day on the H390, while it worked perfectly, actually really well, they don't recommend the regular DC block to use with this uh, integrated amplifier. Reason being, it only supports up to 150 watts times two, so 300 total watts of, of output. Uh, the Hegel H390, unfortunately, is a 250 watt per channel output. So it's 500 watts total. 
that is too much power for the regular DC block to handle, according to Audiolab. So what they recommend is going with their more expensive DC block six. I think it has you covered for up to 1800 watts of total output, which is, you know, crazy overkill for what I use. But from what I read on the internet, and I'm not sure about this, but they say that the regular DC block on the 390 or, you know, amps that draw in more power, you can blow a fuse on the DC block, but more importantly, and potentially, you can blow your amp, which um, my Hegel H390, no thanks, I don't want to blow that. So yeah, so I went out and I got the DC block six. Here it is. And I'm gonna quickly unbox it. And I ordered the black, of course, because I like it to disappear. Taking a closer look at the DC Block 6, its exterior is made out of the same coated metal as the DC Block. But turning it around to the back, you'll notice a couple of key differences. First off, it's got six outlets for your audio components. Besides that, it's got a power switch, access to the breaker, and voltmeter display toggle. The front actually has a display that shows you how many volts are currently being used. Now, since I get easily distracted, I really appreciate that they gave us this toggle and normally do keep that display turned off. We've got a mains cable, and this is basically what you would plug from the wall to your integrated. Um, I usually upgrade, especially for my integrated amps, I usually upgrade the cable to a you know very thick um, handmade type cable. This is kind of like the cheap stuff. And then that's another concern is that, so the cables that you hook up to the machine to the DC block six are rather cheap feeling, but they're, I, I don't want to say they're proprietary, but they're different from your average plug that would that would come with your amp to begin with. So it's got a female three pronged, but they're not the, you could see the difference. I'm not sure if you could see that. And then it's got the, sorry, this is sort of female, but sort of male. This is, I, I, this is very current in times. It's like transitioning. Um, but this is the female end that normally plugs into the back of your amp. And it comes with six of them, and they're all the same length, which might give me some issues. Oh, this is not long. I'm going to stand up. This is about five feet, and it looks to be maybe, maybe 18 gauge. Let's say you already have money invested in fancy power cords. I won't judge, don't worry, I have some here myself, and it's just us here, so no one needs to know. The DC block won't allow you to use these cords as is because of this weird connector. I found a short version of said connector with a regular female connection on the other end. So now with these, you can use your chonky, thick, super awesome audiophile power cables for going the cheap stuff that ships with your DC blocker. So, this end connects into the female end like that. And this goes to your DC blocker. This goes to your amp. I ordered a bag of them off of Amazon pretty cheap. So check out the link below the like button if you're interested. It's great that the upgraded and more expensive DC block six is able to support more power and has a couple of additional upgrades as well. Unfortunately, it still doesn't come with a better cable system though. It's the exact same plug-in situation as the regular DC block. Audiolab, if you're watching, please fix this in a future iteration. I'm honestly not sure why that they designed it this way, but with that gripe aside, I have to say that the DC blocker and the DC block six have completely gotten rid of my DC humming problems. They've both performed flawlessly in the months that I've owned them, so I'm pretty happy here. If you've got DC on your lines, check out either of these products from Audiolab as they come fully recommended from my channel. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe on your way out and I'll see you soon. Duck.
the bees.